Hello everyone! Welcome back to some more of our Pathfinder... He's just showing off over here. Uh, welcome back to some Pathfinder. We gotta get across this thing with a mobility check. So, these checks are gonna be rolling d20s behind the scenes. And it looks like our best mobility character is gonna be Melko. <laughs> so Melko got the result of 22. This result is the sum of the dice roll, which was 14, plus the modifiers. Um, and so the difficulty was 12. Since 22 is not lower than 12, the attempt has been successful. So turns out Melko's going to be leading the way in all of our mobility checks because they're a freaking elk. Oh, shit. Hello. There are many roads to oh, also the two new characters. Jeez. I'm familiar with them, but you are not, of course. So, hold on. Let me adjust this there. And perfect strike. No, fight defensively about right there. Point blank shot there. Okay. So, characters. Winduag, the deadly and cunning huntress from the mongrel tribe, left her home to travel to the surface with her new commander. She inhabited a harsh and brutal world where the weak inevitably become prey for the strong, so she chose to be strong. Is there anything in the world she wouldn't do in her quest for power or will survival always remain her primary instinct? The thing is, we haven't gotten out of here yet, so these little bios are a little weird. Um, but there we go. 20 in dexterity, which is pretty high. Abilities that are unique. Mm, okay, so point blank shot. So point blank shot gives you a plus one bonus on attack and damage rolls with ranged weapons at ranges of up to 30 feet. So she has that. And then precise shot. You can shoot and or throw ranged weapons at an opponent engaged in melee without taking the standard minus four penalty. So normally, if without this feat, you get a minus four when you're trying to shoot into melee combat. But she has this, so she's really good at ranged combat. And for some reason, she also has tower shield proficiency. That may just be because she's a fighter. I think fighters maybe just get that by default. And then she also has brew potions. So she can brew potions and spells up to level three during camping, which I haven't really gotten into yet, but that's kind of exciting. So that is Winduag, and she is also neutral evil. Neutral evil. <laughs> Um, then we have Lawful Neutral Lon over here, who is a Zen Archer. So some monks seek to become one with another weapon entirely, the bow. The Zen Archer takes a weapon most other monks askew and seeks perfection in the pool of a taunt bowstring, the flex of a bow's limbs, and the flight of an arrow fired true. So he is an Archer Monk, which is kind of interesting. I've never seen an Archer Monk before. Uh, very high perception, decent lore of uh, nature. Unique skills here. We have weapon proficiency, longbow, and short bow. I think they get that just because of their class. We have improved unarmed strike, which you get because you are a monk. Perfect strike. So you must declare that you're using this feat before you make your attack roll. Thus, a failed attack roll ruins the attempt. But this allows you to roll a, uh, twice, I believe, right? Yes, roll twice and take the higher result. A Zen Archer Monk receives this as a bonus feat at first level, even if he does not meet the prerequisites. A Monk may attempt a Perfect Strike attack a number of times per day equal to his Monk level, plus one more time per day for every four levels he has in classes other than Monk. And then he also has Combat Reflexes, which this I don't really understand. So Combat Reflexes allow you to make additional attacks of opportunity per round equal to your Dexterity bonus. Maybe this is just a Monk bonus feat as well. Because as a ranged character, ranged attacks don't provide attacks of opportunity. Melee attacks are the only ones that get attacks of opportunity. So this doesn't really fit the character. So again, I'm, I'm guessing... I'm guessing this is a bonus feat for, for just monks in general, which is why they have it. And then they also have the point blank shot. But they do not have precise shot. So he will still incur a minus four penalty when attacking into melee. But he also does come with flurry of blows. So starting at first level, a Zen Archer can make a flurry of blows as a full action, but only when using a bow. Excuse me. <clears throat> so, a Zen Archer does not apply a strength bonus and damage rolls made with Flurry of bow Blows unless he is using a Composite Bow with a Strength Rating. So, he gets to attack twice when making a full attack action at plus 5, plus 5, but right now he does not have Precision Strike, so it's going to be, most of the time, at a plus 1, plus 1, because he's going to have a minus 4 penalty. And that is, oh, his summary. Lan the Mongrel is a curious sight, even for the distorted land of the World Wound. A descendant of the First Crusaders, a child of the caves beneath uh, Canabras, he followed his new leader up toward the light of the foreign sky. It seems that nothing can shake his composure, but is that really true? How strong is a man's resolve, built upon a self-imposed death sentence? Hmm. Distorted, not broken. So those are our characters, two ranged characters. Let's go to our formation. They will be in the back. Yeah, actually, that, that kind of makes sense. 
Um, let's put you here, Melko right there. All right. Let's go kill the spider. All right, let's kill both these spiders. And we're going to... Oh, we want to activate this. So when you have Point Blank Shot activated, that means the character will move first to make sure that they are within a 30-foot range. Also, we have caught these enemies flat-footed. So we're going to move up. And we can't do a um, attack action this turn. Camellia, let's get you up. Melko. There we go. Get you up. Won't be able to, to attack yet. Sila. Lan. Make sure that's active. All right, now we're on the first round. So let's I'll fire. Rip you apart. Ah. Oh shit. Only needed a 13? Oh shit. Okay. Um, let's actually activate the spirit weapon enhancement, which will give her a plus one to attack rolls. And then we will five foot step in. Not that we need to five foot step, but still. Demand your blood. Melko, go for it. Nice. Very nice. Oh, Anivia goes. And Anivia just murdered that. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Anivia. She may be injured, but she's not out of the fight. A bazoar. Use to brew potions. Okay. Scribe stuff. Okay. Collect all that. And then we're going to go do this mobility check. After we got this loot. More inflicts light wounds, so collect all that. And then we're going to put inflict light wounds onto her hotbar. Because she can cast this spell. Oh, you know what I forgot to do, though? I forgot to look at spell books. I guess we'll do that when we take a rest. Because for Camellia, you need to prepare her spells before you rest in case you want her to have new spells. Because she actually knows a lot of spells, but she can't cast them all at the same time. Alright, mobility check. Thank you, Melko. Alright, so again, this fight only had one elemental. Now we have three. We caught them flat-footed again, it looks like. So let's move into position. Damn, we keep catching them on flat footed. Why are we catching them on flat footing? I don't even know how you do that. Is it because of Melko? Are we getting such a high initiative roll? I actually don't know. Like, we're all flat footed, but they're not going to be able to act. Huh. I don't know what causes that. Uh, Windowag, let's get into no range. Lawn, same thing. The wrong Wait, you were able to attack this turn? Oh, shit. Oh, because our standard action didn't need to be a move. That's that's why. Duh. I'll come up behind. All right, I forgot to show you. We have this new ability here, Light of the Angels. So, I summon a soothing light, warming the hearts of your allies and obscuring the vision of your enemies. Every ally within 20 feet gains one temporary hit point for one hour, and the enemies become dazzled for 1d4 rounds, which lowers their attack rolls by one. And I can do this every single turn, so if, if I wanted to. But it, do, it is a standard action. And then we also have that challenge still, which I don't think I'm going to use quite yet. What is their AC? Nope, not what I meant to do. Damn, the thing's already dead. What's her hit points? I don't know what their hit points are. They'll beg me to stop. Guess I don't know that. But holy shit, we just took him down with a hoof attack. Nice. You won't survive me. Oh right, because we hit it before with the, with Lon. That's why. The inheritor, guide my blade. Ow! Ow! Actually, that did eleven damage. All right, kill light wounds. Okay, we got a four. That's not the best. It is what it is, though. 
I'll just have to resort to brute force. Ooh. Okay, 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 okay. Damn. Endure this. Damn, damn. Uh, they're not evil, so I can't do smite evil. I think I'm actually gonna drink this potion to kill my wounds. Plus eight. Okay, okay, we're in business. Ah, I could have also attacked. Whoops. Drinking doesn't take the um, standard action. You are today's sacrifice. I'm gonna lower their attack by one. Jesus. They'll beg me to stop. Lon, please. Nice, thank you, Lon. Okay, Sila. No glory without Stay in this fight. Oh, shit. That was close. That was close. Go for their hearts. So it comes to this. Jesus. Thank you, Malco. No match for me. You've crossed the wrong mongrel. Ah. Into the fray. Okay, I may actually take a five foot step back. Roll to one. You've made your choice. There we go. Together Holy we shit. Alright, here, you take. I guess I gotta put it here and then put it here. Ooh. A bright future awaits us. Alright, alright. Oh, actually we can also I use your that. object bond to bring one spell back. Okay, so what do we get from this? We get... All oh, right, Yes! The Wand of Cure Light Wounds. Okay. Okay. So, let's give that to you. So now we have... How many charges is it? Fifteen. Whew. Okay. That's... It's going to be very useful. So this definitely is harder. I don't... I think I maybe only had a cure once at this point. Do not feel Do not... So the extra enemies, they do add something. Uh, let's see, they are flat-footed, so let's roll up. Okay, there's one, just one. Sila. Move up. Get in there, Melko. Lon. You won't survive me. Get in position. Um, you know what, window wag? Just fire from here. I will take that. All right, let's pop your enhancement again. The spirits demand your blood. And then Sila, I would like to move you. Oh my God, there's not snipping right there. Right there. The inheritor. Nice. My blade. Very nice. Solid hits. Uh, Melko, your AC is not that nuts, right? Oh, actually, you have a 22. You're pretty hard to hit because of your natural armor bonus. Endure this. All right, turn that back the on. Beg me to stop. A spitting giant centipede. That is even scarier. And yet it is not spitting. Okay, 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 okay. Let's attack you first. So, I haven't showed it yet, but we should be getting ooh, uh, flanking bonuses here. Yep, plus two for flanking. Very nice. We missed, but we are getting flanking bonuses. You are today's sacrifice! The light. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Sila. 
Uh, did not mean to click on the loot. Damn, Melko. Damn. Damn. Strike count. All right, just cleaning house. No match for me. I'll just have to resort to brute force. Go for their heart. Excellent. I do understand what attacking is. We'll take the masterwork like crossbow because we can use that or sell that. We can use it too. Masterwork weapons give you a plus one to your attack rolls. I found uh, yet another found obstacle. obstacle. Alright, spiders. Let's do this. Can not can we not attack this round? Surely we can. Can't charge. Maybe we can't. I guess we can't. Let me do the lights. Okay, you Maybe you can. Me. What the fuck? Very nice. Thank you, Windowog. Sila, let's move you a little bit up. But not all the way up because Lan will now get a plus five, plus five. You've crossed the wrong Mongrel. Very good. Woo! A little close, a little close. So it comes to this. We are killing it. It does help that we have. Ooh, Master Rick Racer, we could sell that. Don't need the light shield, the pearl, yeah. Comma, don't really need. It helps that we have Melko. Melko with three additional attacks does. Feel pretty strong. Uh, Windowak glances at Lon, who is fixing his slipped bowstring, and quickly walks over to you. Her cat like eyes glow from beneath her hood. Listen here, you. I don't know who you are or where you come from, but you and I are the only two people here who see things clearly. That's why I'm asking you don't show the light of heaven to Saul. Don't you want to save the kids? I do want to, but I'm not going to risk the future of the tribe for the sake of a few stupid kids. Chief Saul is hesitant, and for good reason. He also understands how dangerous this is for the tribe. Lon's the only one who benefits from these children childish games of heroism. I'll go alone if I have to and find them, or whatever's left of them. Without any heroics, relying on, only on myself. Risking only my life. You and your friends, you can come with me. Perhaps we can make it to the end of the maze together and find the way out to the surface. I'll think about it. Don't show the chief the light, and I'll lead you through the maze to the surface, I swear it. Hmm. Hmm. She wants us to lie. And then this is the loot that we left over, which I'm not going to collect. We're just going to leave. Actually, I probably should have collected it, because there is a vendor here in this place. Ah, well. I miss out on, like, 15 gold. Hello! I'll just pray our ancestors to bring back the children. Hello, mongrels. Good morrow. Your first impression of the mongrel village is of a squalid dump with the odors to match. Unblinking, glowing eyes watch you from the gloom and deformed shadows slow between the huts. You see some mongrels gutting white eyeless fish while others are repairing fishing nets. All the signs of normal fishing or village life, but tense expectations hang in the air. A heavyset aged mongrel slowly shuffles his way towards you. The hair on his head grows in limp, wispy strands, and his face has a distinctly rat-like appearance with pronounced teeth, and you hear a rattling sound in his chest with every breath he takes. One of his eyes is white, fully scarred by cataracts, while the other gleams with moisture. Uplanders, eh? End times are upon us, indeed. Chief Saul, we found the Angel Sword, and we found the one who can wield it. Lon points at you. He had a vision, and now the Angel Sword is somehow inside him. Gather the tribe. Anyone who can hold a weapon, the young ones are still alive, and we can go save them. Saul raises his hand with the ragged, broken fingernails. Ah, Lan. 
Always dreaming, always talking. You're too hasty. Too hasty for your own good. It's going to get you in trouble. Saul eyes you up and down. An uplander with the light of heaven? That's too good for us. Our kind don't have good things happen. There's always a catch. Lan trusts people because he likes to believe. Isn't that right, Lan? I'm the chief. I don't work on faith. Show the light. Windowax stares at you intently, like a cat watching a bird, and shakes her head in warning. Hmm. hmm. Well, I am not bound by lawful. Our character is chaotic good. And it was implied that lives would be lost if these mongrels went in to go save the children at the um, shield maze. And also, this is the choice I picked in my first playthrough, so I'm going to do this one again. Lon is mistaken. We didn't find the sword. Lon whips around to look at you, stunned. He clenches his fist for a moment, as if planning to shake the truth out of you. But he quickly gets a handle on himself. I don't know why you're lying. No doubt you have your reasons, but I know it's a lie, and you know it. And Windu knows it. Lon turns to Winduag. Tell him, Windu. I mean, I definitely have a sword. I was going, I was like... Sword on, sword off, sword on. Like the entire way here, I was just like, on off, on off. <laughs> Look at this thing. Windowax stares blankly back at him. I saw the light shining between rocks and then it went out. Land saw what he wanted to see. Why are you doing this? Doing what? Telling the truth? I'm gonna say nothing. Lon looks at you expectantly and sighs when you don't answer. Right, you and Windu have worked everything out between yourselves. Played me for a blind mole here. Lan barks a hollow laugh. Everybody around me said that they didn't want to go anywhere to go anywhere or save anyone, but I didn't believe them. I always have to take things further than anyone else. Isn't that right, Chief? Fine. I see how things are. I don't need any more convincing. Lon offers a crooked smile. Please, Lon. Miracles are not meant for us. We, the tribe, we wait. If you're one of us, you will wait. We're not going anywhere. Uplanders... Rest now. There is a hut over there that you can rest at. Lon is silent, his eyes shifting from you and Saul to Winduag. You made the right choice. It was the lesser of two evils, and now, rest, so we can be at our best when we go into the maze. I promise to lead you to the surface, and I will. And then we get some levels. Okay, so we're going to be a level 2 beast rider. We cannot cast spells. Thank you very much, game, for reminding me. It hurts. As the Order of the Alliance, at second level, we get the standard action giving an encouraging speech which grants allies within 60 feet, a competence bonus on their saving throws against fear, and a plus one bonus to the attack rolls. Um, and I think we could probably do this at any time? For a number, any time when allies in effect? I, think, well, I guess we'll find out. But it works for as long as um, rounds equal to our cavalier level, so for two rounds now. So that should be kind of neat. And then we get three more ranks. We're going to do athletics and more mobility and more persuasion. And that's it. We get Lion's Call. Our hit points are now up to 22, which, hell yeah, that's pretty cool. And then for Sila, she's a level 2 Palaladin. At level 2 Paladin, she gets Lay on Hands. Beginning at second level, she can either touch herself or someone else and heal them. A number of times equal to half her level plus her charisma modifier. Uh, then she can also use this offensively against like undead and deal damage to them too. Which is pretty neat. And then she also gets Divine Grace. So she gets a bonus equal to her charisma bonus to all saving throws. Which that's a huge bonus. Having higher saving throws, fantastic. For her skills, we're going to go for... So she, she knows Trickery, Stealth, Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, Lore Nature, Lore Religion, and Persuasion. She has a lot. I'm going to go for Lore World. And since she's a Paladin, Lore Na or lore Religion probably makes sense. And... Hmm. Hmm. I guess Lore Nature? Can we do... No, yeah, let's do another Lore Religion. So she has trickery and stealth because she used to be a thief. I don't know if she's actually said this yet. If she does, if she hasn't yet, I don't think she has. She will say it soon. I found out somehow. 
And I'm not that much further along in this game in my first playthrough. Is that listed like in her character sheet somewhere? Can't remember. Anyway, okay, so that's what she has. She also has 22 hit points. Camellia, a shaman spirit hunter, is going to gain a hex this time around. Uh, so let's look at the hexes. Oh, let's also upgrade her trickery. Let's get... Lore Nature. And I guess that's it. Alright, so these are all the different hexes. I'm not going to go through all of them right now. Um, last time I went with Evil Eye, which is a thing that we can do every single round. Evil Eye can give a minus two penalty on an enemy's AC, ability checks, attack rolls, saving throws, skill checks. And we get to choose each time. If they fail their will save, then they're going to be um, under this effect for three plus a Shaman's Wisdom Meyer number of rounds. Even if they pass, they still get this effect for one round, though. That's what I chose last time. Um, but there are, there are, there are a lot. There are a lot. Uh, Battle Ward. Next time a foe makes an attack roll against a target, the ward activates and grants a plus three deflection bonus to the warded creature's AC. Each subsequent time she's attacked, the deflection bonus is reduced by, um, by one. And the ward phase when the bonus is reduced to zero or after 24 hours, whatever comes first. So that's also kind of neat. I'm probably just going to go for the evil eye, though, I think. But yes, there are a whole bunch. There's also healing, actually. This acts as a cure light wound spell using the shaman's cash level. Once a creature has benefited from a healing hex, it cannot benefit for it uh, from it again for 24 hours. Which is kind of it. And then I remember ice plant being cool. The hex grants the shaman a plus two natural armor bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's also kind of neat. Uh, this you can grow nails for some damage. We can call sleep. Plus two deflection bonus to AC and saving throws. This lasts until the water creature is hit or fails a saving throw. Um, we can only have one ward active at a time. That's also pretty good. We can just put this on uh, Sila. Damn. But when the water creature is hit, then it fails. So we'd have to recast it. Oh, God, there's so many, and they're all pretty cool. We're not going to do any of the uh, meta magic feats right now, so we're not going to pick that. Even though I was like, I'm going to go in here picking Evil Eye, and I'm still like, God, there's so many, though. Battlemaster? Um, let's see. Battlemaster. The Shaman makes an extra attack of opportunity each round. This ability stacks the attacks of opportunity granted by the combat reflex feat. And then you also... Oh, that's what you get at first level. Then at eighth level... It's, I guess it's just all about attacks of opportunity. Um, ah! There's so many that I want. There's so many that I want. Grant, give me ward. You know what? Give me ward. It's going to take a ward. We're taking ward. It's done. All right. Lon, as a Zen Archer, let's give you... Stealth, Perception, I guess no one else really has Perception, do they? And then, mm, Athletics. For the feet, we're going to take Precise Shot, so he doesn't take a minus four. And then we're going to do Way of the Bow Longbow. At second level, Zen Archer gains Weapon Focus as a bonus feat with one of the following. Uh, so Weapon Focus is going to give them a plus one to hit. So we'll do that. Windwag, she is a fighter. We're going to give her perception as well. We're going to give her athletics, and then that's it. And then I'm going to give her weapon focus. Now, I know that we're going to be getting a weapon soon. I'm going to give her a weapon focus javelin, which is going to give her a plus one to hit with javelins. Actually, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. No, no, no. What I did last time was rapid shot. So rapid shot, you can make full range attacks with your weapons, but all of your attack rolls take a minus two penalty. I'm going to do rapid shot instead. So what I did in my first playthrough. But also my first playthrough, I found a javelin and I gave her a javelin. Again, we're going to see that very soon. Like, in the, well, probably in the next episode. We're almost up to where I was the first time. When my audio was all messed up and I had to re-record all of this. All right, complete. And then uh, Melkyo gets to level up. Level 2 Daredevil. I don't believe... Yeah, Melkyo gets nothing except for hit points. Oh, and then mobility and... 
the stealth? A stealthy mobile elk. That's Melko. And then they still only have 13 hit points? Did that even raise up at all? Was it 7 before? Maybe it was 7 before. Well, now you have 13. Okay, that is that is the, uh, the level ups. Okay. Now, we're going to go down here. Ah, yes, right. Finally, someone from the surface. I was beginning to lose hope. An elderly man in an expensive but not ostentatious clothes approaches you. His face is peppered with several healed cuts and bruises and twisted in an expression of, of extreme discontent. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Horgus Gworm. Yes, that Gworm. You no doubt have heard of me if you spend any time at all in the city. I have a business proposition for you. Your name tells me nothing. Who are you? Well, you truly are freshly arrived in the city, then. You couldn't have picked a worse time, that's for certain. Only just arrived and the city's been raised to rubble. You should know that you are looking at one of the richest and most distinguished men in all of Canebris. I may not be as well known as certain swaggering loudmouths who spend their lives traipsing from one ball to the next, but the Gorm Trading Company is one of the pillars of the city, I'll have you know. Did you see the marquee in the square? I paid for those. Tried any festival delicacies? You have Horgus Gorm to thank for that. Uh-huh. And what kind of proposition? I don't know what is happening on the surface right now, but I am determined to find out. You have no intention of seeing out the rest of your days in this village, I suspect. You must find a route back to the surface. To the city, if there is anything left of it. You seem to be a remarkably strong warrior. Just what we need to get through these caves and past the bloodthirsty beasts that inhabit them. You are strong. It will be no trouble to you. But I, alas, am not as fit as I once was. I can't go crawling th about through caves, playing at scouts. My proposition is simple. Lead me back to the city, and I shall pay you a thousand gold coins. I suggest we help this man. It is good to have friends among the Canebrus elite. <laughs> I am diplomatic. Two thousand. Yeah! Horgus gaze is piercing. Are you taking advantage of my dire circumstances? Very well. Make it two thousand. Deal. I won't push him. We'll say deal. Splendid. In the meantime, I shall sit here in this village. Okay, we have to go. Go on, go on. Don't forget our agreement. When you find the way out, be sure to tell me. I will tell you. Right, let's go over here. To Anevia and more Horgris. This tragedy may not have happened if you spend less time surveilling honest citizens and more time... Less time surveilling honest citizens and more time tracking the real spies and demon worshippers. Brilliant idea. How come I didn't think of it? Now if only the cultists would tell us they were cultists. Then we wouldn't have to waste time investigating honest citizens who decide to go all cloak and dagger right under our noses. Horgus and Anivia sit some distance apart, sniping at one another in an idle fashion that testifies to their long acquaintance and mutual dislike. When they notice you, they quickly fall silent. So, what's this bad blood? Uh, that's an old matter. Miss uh, Tyrobade here had the notion of spying on me, then of rummaging through my goods. I ask you, do I look like a cultist? Cultists don't tend to look like cultists, you know. That's kind of the whole problem. And you, Mr. Gorm, built a whole secret operation of buying and smuggling into the city. What, what was it? Oh yeah, magical weapons. How was I supposed to know that the whole rigmarole with middlemen was so you could anonymously donate supplies to the crusade? Don't you see? I have a reputation to uphold. One that I value most highly. Horgus Worm is a hard-nosed businessman, not a good fairy from a tale. Yes, I care about my city. Yes, I wish to see that its defenders, my defenders, were well-fed, healthy, and well-armed. But to make those donations openly was unthinkable. I might as well hang a sign outside my door welcoming every sponge or leech and parasite in the city. I appreciate your help for the crusade. No jokes aside, or no jokes, you're an alright bloke. 
But carrying on secret dealings in a city that's teeming with cultists is a huge pain in the backside for us lot, whose job it is to keep an eye on this sort of thing. How's your leg? Well, it hasn't fallen off yet, so that's good. They bandaged me up all nice and smeared some stinking stuff on the wound, so it looks like I'm gonna live. They said, wait a day and I'll be right as rain. What do you think's happening? Perhaps the city is no more. If Descari himself appeared, there's no telling how bad things are. Can you hold off on writing our obituaries just yet? The city's full of fighters. Besides that, it's barely a stone's throw from Nerosian. I think our people will hold on. Long enough for reinforcements to come from the Queen. This isn't Descari's home turf. He's gonna have to retreat or else fight off a whole Men Mendevian army. Uh, Nerosian is like the home of the Crusade. Of this whole ordeal. There's a cathedral there, there's a Queen Golfrey there. So that's Nerosian. Apparently it's pretty close. I've never seen it. Haven't got that far. Um, what are you going to do when you get back to the surface? I'm going to go home. Last I knew, I owned a very fine mansion. I shall see if it's still standing, or if I'm now homeless. I'm going to go find Irabeth. She's my wife and the leader of the Eagle Watch. As long as she lives, she won't allow Kinnebrest to fall. Yeah. I thought they were just a story. The sort of thing drunks in the taverns would come out with. Now I discover that it's true! But what can I possibly think of them? The poor creatures are more unfortunate with their faces and their minds all deformed. It's a miracle they're even alive. And again, speaking of stories, truth be told, stories are all I ever knew about Kitsune. Word has it that there is a lady diplomat in the capital, a, a true fox, both in looks and behavior. But uh, I've, I've never met her myself. Uh, perhaps mongrels are not that exotic by comparison. The part that boggles my mind is that they are the descendants of the First Crusaders. All these years they've been living beneath our feet in caves and in the dirt. If I'd known the legends about them were true, I'd have dedicated my life to getting them out of this place. To what end? The people of Kinnebras would have stoned them on sight, and Prelate Halrun would have had them tossed on the pyre in mass. Whatever the ills of this place, it is their home. How long do you think they would have survived on the surface? Okay, we gotta go. Yeah, go on then. And don't dilly dally. The sooner we get out of here, the, luckly, the likelier we are to find some people still alive up there. Take care of yourself. So the thing I like about Horgris is that, you know, he's kind of a prick. <laughs> he's, a, he's a very wealthy prick, but he went through a whole ordeal to try not to be chari- to try not to be seen to be charitable and donated a whole bunch of stuff to the um, Crusades. It's kind of neat. It's a, little, it's a little interesting. He isn't just an asshole. Uh, Dyra's going to be a vendor. Let's trade. I'm going to sell all of our junk. I'm going to sell this, 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 that. Uh, these can actually be worn by Lan. I'm going to sell the light mace. Mm, the flail. The two long swords. The spear. Masterwork light crossbow. And then that is it. As far as things to buy, I don't remember her having much. Like, she has no magical weapons, no masterwork weapons. Her armor is... I mean, I can't even afford thick pads anyway. Braces of armor, already have one. Purifying Solution is apparently used to eat food in the World Wound, which we're not even, we're not even there yet. Uh, maybe a couple potions of Cure Light Wounds, because especially this... This run seems to be a little trickier. Maybe I just buy them all. Do I buy them all? I don't know. I I will say there there will be a lot of potions of cure light wounds coming up, but we're probably gonna need them in this in this next part. Mm, I'll buy five. Okay. Okay, and then we are going to sleep. Over here somewhere. All right, there. There we go. We finally get to rest, so now all of us will no longer be fatigued. Hold on. Mm-mm. Need to take a drink of water. <clears throat> Been talking a lot. It's time. We're heading out now. Mom won't get in our way. When Dog breathes in deeply through her nose, her eyes narrowing in concentration like she's trying to taste the air. 
to detect even the faintest sense. Finally, she gives an approving nod. Lon won't get in our way. W where is he? On the way to his death if he decided to go it alone. Or maybe he's in a hole somewhere crying about how lonely he is. I don't care either way. Damn. Are we just going to leave Horgus and Anivia here? Getting you all out at once would be difficult. We'll let the injured woman recover. Do you think I like knowing there are uplanders sitting in our village? But trying to drag an injured person through the maze would be suicide. And don't even get me started on the other one. He's not going to get off his backside unless we send a litter to carry him. Okay. We're just going to say it's, it's time to get out, get out of here. Right, and another thing. You could have chosen not to listen to me, but you did. That means you have real strength in you. A strong person can take the truth, even if they don't like it. And the truth was on my side. I want to say... When do I go first her eyes? Thank you. You saved the tribe from a stupid mistake. They're alive now because of you. Now let's get to the boats. We'll get there fastest by water. Boats it is, Windwag. Boats it is. Let me steal this little precious loot here. This eyeball. Gotta love eyeballs. <laughs> Just love opening up a bag and pulling out a fresh old eyeball. Alright. Let's make it to the maze. The shield maze. So that's the way in. Uh, we're going to take this path. It's not going to be very far. But I think there is a little bit of loot at the end of it. Do not fear. Do not waver. So I got into this uh, upcoming area. So we're almost back to where I used to be. Alright, this is going to be our rapid fire. No match for me. And she critted. Nice. Let's go, Melko. That's okay. Can't get them all. Oh, I did it again. I did it again. I did it again. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put charge right here. And then I'm going to put... Oh, I forgot about the cantrip spells. Right, she has cantrip spells. This is light. Um, days. We can daze somebody. Maybe we'll want to do that. Virtue. Uh, one temporary hit point. We don't need that. Zap is a 1d3 damage spell. Okay, that's probably all we'll use. I think. Okay, well now we gotta kind of hope that somebody gets, gets hit here. The Inheritor. Nice. Okay, I don't know how long. I think she just holds that until she takes another action. So she's going to be holding that for a bit. Let's try and skin them. Did not get the material. Okay, never mind. There is no loot back here. I lied. I lied to all of you. I'm sorry. <laughs> and here we are. Lore religion. This was simple enough. Boss Relief of Baphomet, Demon Lord, Lord of the Minotaurs, and Lord of the Labyrinth. There are many roads to success. And of course, when you hear the word Labyrinth, you remind me of the babe. They will break the and now, the evil cultists. We got a wizard. Go on, go on. Casting Magic Missile. Okay, thank you. I needed to do a Cure Light Wounds anyway. Um, we have a sharpshooter and then a cultist with the glaive. I'm gonna go straight for the wizard. Oh, interesting. So there's an extra wizard over here in the enlarged version. Oh shit, that's scary. That is actually very scary. Um, we definitely want to kill wizards. I, if we turn off point blank shot, can you shoot from here? Okay, so either way, she's gonna have to do a move action. Okay. 
I'll rip you apart! Melko, can you charge that far? No, it's at, it's just outside of range, I think. Okay, we'll move next to the wizard. If they try to cast spells in melee, unless they're a certain kind of spell, I believe, they get attacks for opportunity. I think. I think. Keyword there. Can't charge you. Mm. Oh yeah, we can try the lion's call. Hold on. Let me move up with a move action. Okay. Uh, Camellia. Oh, um, we need Cure Light Wounds back. So let's go to first level tab. Put that right there. And then you're going to finish curing yourself. There we go. Three hit points. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I'll take it. Divine Favor, not what I want to see there. Okay. Let's go... Hit you. I'm done with you. So, they try to do a range attack in melee, which means we get an attack of opportunity on them. That did not go well for them. Got to be careful about that. We're going to turn on point blank shot again. I mean, it's always active. This doesn't mean we're deactivating it. This just means that she will always move into 30 feet range before firing. No match for me. But it is always active, you know. Miss. Hoof attack. Hoof attack. Oh, yeah. Get beat. Get beat. Melko is not here to fuck around. Melko's not here to fuck around. Also, it does look like we can repeatedly do Lion's Call. So, basically, we can always have a plus one bonus on attack rolls for everybody. And then a confidence bonus on their saving throws against fear. That's pretty cool. I like this. I always like playing support characters, so this kind of, this kind of vibes with me pretty well. Let's do a charge. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Who needs a mount to lance somebody down? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, shit. I did my lion's call and then I f that man up. Let's see if we can unlock this, this chest. Was beyond me. What? Keep you going. I am helpful. There we go. Am I not? That's the thing. You can just kind of keep doing checks until you pass. All right. So, Masterwork Lave, we can sell. Dagger I'll leave here, chain shirt, unless it's better than anything we have. Uh, let me check what Winduag has, actually. Scroll of Fire Belly. So this is an abjuration. I don't even know if anyone can use this. Because the only spellcaster we have is... Well, actually, maybe you can. Hold on, let me see. Let me collect that. Can you use... No. This is outside her knowledge. Is Fire Belly divine? I'm actually not sure what a shaman is. A shaman seems to be kind of like a bard. Oh, I forgot. To, okay, let's open up her spell book. The spells that she has right now are fine, but we could have we could have got a third spell though. So because of her spirit magic, this this gives her enlarged person for free. But I could have I could have had another another spell. But anyway, these are all the spells that she knows, and we get to choose three of these at any time to actually cast. So. That was my bad. I forgot to do that. Right now, so we don't forget, let's at the very least do just three Cure Light Wounds. Or... Or... One of these will be Bless. So Bless is an AoE spell that raises our uh, attack rolls and saving throws against fear effects by one. But it's a morale bonus. So you gotta you gotta be careful because bonuses typically don't stack. So this is a plus one morale. My lion's call ability is a competence bonus. I think yes, his is a competence bonus. So his lion's call and her bless can actually stack to give the party a plus two to their attack rolls and saves against fears and all that. But if both of these were like morale bonuses plus one, I believe you only get one or the other. They don't. I don't think they stack. I don't think. I, mean, I guess we'll find out at some point. For sure, but I'm pretty sure they don't. Potion of Reduced Person. Some gold. I do love my gold. We'll take that too. Okay, and then let's loot these. Nope. 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 
Uh, inflict light wounds, yes. Oh, the armor, yes. So Windwag is actually currently not wearing anything. Uh, she is a fighter, so she's competent with all armors. She has a five dexterity. This chain shirt is only going to use four out of her five. So she's going to get a plus eight with this. Bringing her up to a 17. So it's kind of crazy. Without any armor, she was naturally at a 17. I think it's because she has natural armor. Right? I think she does. Is that counted in here? Yeah. So mongrels have plus two natural armor and her dex bonus was five. She had a freaking uh, 17 without wearing anything. That is crazy. And so now we have natural armor, armor plus four, and her dex bonus of four. Bring her up to a 20. Um, well, actually, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Does this slow her down? Okay, and it, all, it also does not slow her down. She's still 30, 30 feet. She moves 30 feet, right? Uh, this will change if the armor you're wearing will, you know, make you move slower. So this is very good for her. Very good. All right. And that's it. Okay. Ooh, inflict serious wounds. Oh, shit. So inflict light wounds is a 1d8 and inflict serious is like a 3d8? Yeah, 3d8, jeez. Can you even use this? I guess you can. It is a higher level than what you can normally cast, but I guess since it's a scroll, you're okay? Alright, alright, we'll save that for some, some big biggins. I found ah, traps. Uh. So we need to disable traps by hitting this button that's attached to it. A little line will be drawn to it. I as long as you see the trap. This. So having someone with trickery is going to be very powerful. Elemental essence. That's used for some potions and tinctures. Save the last one for me. Now this is unfortunate. So my perception last time was high enough that there is actually something to pick up in this bookshelf. But none of us are seeing it. That's unfortunate. Okay, let's not charge. Why would I want to do that? Let's just calmly move up to this Baphomet cultist. Camellia, let's move up. And then we're going to cast Ward on Sila. Lovely. Thank you. Still got hit. Still got hit. Alright, let me move up and then Lion's Call. Windwag. Beg me to stop. Good hit. That's okay, buddy. Alright, you're going to lay on hand yourself. Alright, healing of five, though. Not bad, not bad. Camellia. So. Her ward save is gone, right? All right, so reward save her. Hopefully, they she doesn't get it this time. This will leave a bruise. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I'll rip you apart. That's fine. Okay. Into the fray. Shit. Getting a little greedy. I'm getting a little greedy. Alright, cure light wounds. Oh, we were in range! Oh, because he has a reach weapon because it's a glaive. Uh, it's a glaive. Yeah. So this is how it Son of a bit. She's a minus two. I'll just have to resort to brute force. Oh my god. Oh my god, die please. Okay. She's alright. Trust me. She's alright. Jesus. A bright future awaits us. Open I am already team. out of like cures. Jesus. Okay, we're alright. We're alright. That was just one dude. More inflict wounds, masterwork glaive, that prick, and then a breastplate. This is worth 50, but it's 30 pounds. Is that going to be worthwhile for me? Maybe. It is. It gives me a plus one. So that's worthwhile. I will 
probably just drop the scale mail. Lore Religion. Again, Extensive but slightly water damage collection of writings. Alright. Damn, none of us saw the loot. Th what is that? Wait, there we go. I think we just saw it. We just saw it. I don't even think it's that great. Uh, actually, no, that's pretty good. Lesser Restoration is cool. A map of old Avistan, so we can sell that. And then more Inflict Light Wounds. Alright. Scroll of Prayer is pretty cool. And Scroll of Bear's Endurance adds 4 to Constitution. I'm actually going to give those to Sila. She should be able to use the Prayer. Yes, she can. And she can also use Restoration, which we hopefully we won't need for, for a while. Let me get you some of those potions. Get you a potion. And... And I guess that's it? Wait, hold on. Okay, and then you're the only one who can use the Bear's Endurance. Okay. So for serious fights, we're probably going to do Bear's Endurance on... Sila to give her plus four constitution which will give her essentially like temporary hit points kind of more inflict light wounds a lore book another scroll of prayer and a scroll of bless okay so bless as we were talking before this is going to be a morale bonus and then prayer is a luck bonus on attack rolls damage rolls save skill checks so we can have lion's call active prayer active and bless active all at the same time for if we get into a serious fight we can all have a plus three confidence bonus to attack roll like that's huge especially at this level that's that's pretty big that's no joke and we got two scrolls of prayer that's really that's really good oh i just noticed the time jesus okay um, well, I'm going to end this episode here, and then in the next episode, we're going to catch up to where I was, and so I'm going to get to experience some new stuff, uh, as, as, as well as you. So that should be pretty cool. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I will see you all in the next episode. Until then, take care.